See the hot dog? We're meant to believe they're in Chicago right now and Pastor Dave has put ketchup on a hot dog. I support Pastor Dave. Hot dogs are made for ketchup. Go on a trip to, to, to Germany. The people who I feel like invented sausages. Sure, okay, so I want mustard on my vice versa. That's a freaking American hot dog and that deserves ketchup. What's up guys, Michael here and I wanna get right into it. I've covered God's Not Dead 1 and 2 before and we're gonna cover God's Not Dead 3 but because the movie involves a lot of legal elements, we called YouTube's number one lawyer, Devin from Legal Eagle and he's going to be joining me today and we're going to be watching God's Not Dead 3. So let's get into it. Devin, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure to be here, I think. To have a bona fide legal expert to help me figure out once and for all if any of the law stuff in these movies make any sense is going to be really helpful. Yeah, well, uh, if God is dead, I guess the lawyers are responsible. So we'll find out. I guess that proves there is no God. Wow, you said it, not me. So if you're go with it, let's... Let's dive into this movie. Okay. How do you define truth exactly? Truth is a person. A person of Jesus Christ. It's the one truth above all others. Great question, right? What is truth? Um, and you know, this, for anyone who hasn't seen the other films, our series starts in a philosophy lecture where a philosopher played by a Hercules, Kevin Sorbo, makes all the students write God is dead. Which is a totally normal thing for a ph philosophy professor to make his students. That's what they teach you. It's an interesting question that's asked, and he even kind of gives an interesting answer by saying the truth is is a person. Now what he says seems like it worked best with Thomas Aquinas, who had a participatory model of truth, meaning that something is true in so much as it participates in the goodness of God. But in that tradition, there's still this balance of faith and reason where faith kind of gets us on the journey, but we can still use reason. And this is why someone like Aquinas is basically using like Aristotelian logic but applied to theology, but we never really get any argument around it. And that the risk of this that I see is an easy way of saying that I have complete access to the truth based wholly on faith and not reason, that kind of proof text, whatever I wanna do. Hard to, to summarize all of that by saying truth is a person. And also we, we didn't really talk about this and this isn't my forte, but I do love that he called it a, an issue of human rights abuses. I won't knock that too hard because He's been put in jail for what is a very blatant and completely unrealistic First Amendment violation. Prior restraint on his sermons. If you put a pastor in jail for this insane First Amendment speech violation, then yeah, okay, you've got an issue of human rights here. That we have a, a human and civil right to freedom of expression. Uh, and that was violated in a completely unrealistic way. There's one sign in the background that says love, not hate. Is Reverend Dave representing love or is he representing hate and that person is anti-Reverend Dave? Yeah, that's a good, it's very unclear. That's a, that's a very good question. I mean, a lot of uh, First Amendment uh, speech and religion law comes from the Westboro Baptist Church cases. So you get things like, is it okay uh, or is it countenanced by the First Amendment? to be able to protest, say, the funeral of a soldier. That is a real Westboro Baptist Church case. And the Supreme Court says, yes, you might find it distasteful, but this church group uh, protesting on a sidewalk near the funeral, uh, core First Amendment activity. Does Pastor Dave represent a wing of Christianity that is similar to the Westboro Baptist Church? And, uh, you know, he's... He is the, the, the one that's hating? I, I don't know. You know what I really want from him is a political theology. <laughs> I want him to explain, does he want the government to stay completely removed from faith and religion in general? Or does he want faith and in particular his brand of religion to have a direct influence on government? But I'm sure once again, this is the third film, all good trilogies wrap everything up. Of course. Uh, by the end of the third one. Um, there's also a fourth. Jesus Christ is the one truth? Really? This guy just can't help himself, can he? This guy is a pastor who was jailed for his belief. It looks like national news, too. Yeah. This is a, a, a Christian pastor mm -hmm. somewhere in middle America, and he says probably the most anodyne thing I can possibly imagine a pastor saying, mm -hmm. and it's national news, like, this guy can't help himself. He's talking about religion. I, I have seen politicians, and I'm sure on both sides of the aisle, in the past week on television, <laughs> talk about their faith being grounding to their policy. I'm a Christian. I've always been a Christian. That's the reason I got into this race, because I see things that are going wrong that's not right in this country. It's so normal in the American political system. Now, maybe if we're in like Germany or France, someone publicly said something like that, it'd be odd. 
but like you just said, wh there's a comment here. So we're looking at, I think, a fake Facebook stream. Yeah. And Brandy Lynn said, what would you expect a pastor to say? Thank yes, you. Brandy. Thank you. Places of worship. But Headley is One truth equals one lie. The question, y'all. What's a church doing on a state campus in the first place? We're okay, so that that is a good, a good question. question. The Supreme Court, uh, especially more recently, has allowed public funds to flow to religious organizations and especially has carved out exceptions where there's long-standing tradition. So in the past, when a legislative body has opened up a legislative session with a prayer or the uh, statute of the Ten Commandments on public land for a long amount of time, the court tends to bend over backwards to find an exception that says it's not really religious, it's more about history um, so potentially maybe this church has been on public grounds for years and years. Yeah, like maybe it predates the uh, construction of the campus around M it. M maybe. This is definitely raising a lot of questions that I don't have answers to. I need to know the background between this church and this public university. Yeah, and I also just doubt that contemporary college students would care this much. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. Hey, David, get back here. David, no. This is uh, Reverend David Hill. I'm a, I'm a pastor at St. James. The hoops they go through to kill this guy. It's so brutal. Also, it's like, so your movies have, oh, you have one character of color who's been in any of them. Well, let's kill him in the first eight minutes. What is that pipe? I guess it's way. like the rock goes through the window and then magically hits the valve on a gas pipe that's connected to nothing. Yeah, no, that's uh, that, that that's not how you deliver gas. Okay, so there's the brick. I mean, I know I shouldn't laugh at this, but it's, it's, it's not real. comical that this light bulb explodes and then I guess that causes the rest of the gas to explode. Yeah, so many things had to happen for that to happen. The FBI are now treating the case as a hate crime homicide. Crowds have already started to gather outside the church to pay their respects. If I was the person that threw the brick and the next day I saw that the church burned down, I'm not even sure that I would put the pieces together that my brick somehow led to the church burning down. It is such yeah. an attenuated set of circumstances. That's a really good call, because there's a lot of steps. And I guess presumably too, there's been all this drama around the church. If I was that young man, I would find it more believable that not only did I brick the church that night, but someone else who was mad about it came by and went way harder than me. And the law makes a distinction between what we call the but-for cause and the proximate cause. So the but-for cause, in that sense, this kid is 100% responsible. He sets the dominoes in motion that led to the church burning down. But just because you are the sin qua non, the, the but for cause, does not mean that you are legally guilty of that act. And that's what the proximate cause is there to distinguish. Are you proximately related in a legal sense to the initial act and the you know, the harm that has befallen someone. Where are we supposed to go? And with what they're offering, how can we build anything anyway? Can we go to court? Another lawsuit, really? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we've burned through any legal reserves, and then some. No land over the last 30 miles of the of mine. Okay, what is this other lawsuit that took all their, their legal reserves, first of all? Because that's not subject to this movie. Yeah, I, I wonder if they're referring to the case from the last film where the school board was suing the Melissa Joan Hart character and maybe they backed her in that case. Mr. Inler, you are out of order. I charge you with contempt. I accept the charge because I have nothing but contempt for these proceedings. Is she a member of this congregation? It's kind of implied that if you live in Hope Springs, this is the church you go to because everyone seems connected with it. But also- Who's white? <laughs> yeah, then the brother comes on the scene because he drives to Chicago to see him. Who's like the best character in this movie. Yes. I don't know why they keep making the atheist like the cool guy character. I know, like. And this in the last movie too. Thing goes to trial, jury probably give you half that amount, less even. Money aside, these things always get messy. Wait, really important. Um, see the hot dog? We're meant to believe they're in Chicago right now and Pastor Dave has put ketchup on a hot dog. <laughs> I'm glad you raised that. I, I support Pastor Dave mm -hmm. in this. Hot dogs are made for ketchup. You Chicagoans uh, know nothing about hot dogs or pizza. Go on a trip to, to, to Germany. The people who I feel like invented sausages or something of that sort, you're getting various mustards and pickled vegetables on a platter because vinegary flavors go better with um, smoked cured meats. Sure, okay, so I want mustard on my vice first. That's a freaking American hot dog. And that deserves ketchup. Shout out in the comments what you put on your hot dogs to settle this once and for all. God called me to fight. I'm gonna fight. Uh. 
God calls you, you call me. God called me to fight is, um, has historically not worked out well. In the New Testament, we refer to Christ as the, the Prince of Peace. So you could also take that route. There's like, turn the other cheek. There's a lot of evidence that maybe the move isn't to, to do a holy war, but whatever Reverend Dave thinks he needs to do. Tell me when you're ready. Yeah. He's both like a cool city lawyer, but he also knows how to get a tree down. I love the double high five. What do you think I do for a living? Do you think I need to have the belief system of every crackhead I defend to defend them? Would a social justice lawyer call people crackheads? I don't know. Probably not. The people who have evolved, science has replaced superstition. Church has outlived its usefulness. It's almost like he is creating a straw man that is conflating the aims of religion with the aims of science as being the same thing. Yeah, and, and it works poorly both ways, right? Like if. Pastor Dave were to say, religion serves the purpose of science, that would be equally as silly. But to act as if, and I'll say like science, the scientific method and enlightenment reason destroys the need for religion or the tendency towards human superstition doesn't make a lot of sense because post enlightenment, no one was arguing that we were done with religion, but that we were done with religion as an explanatory mechanism for things that now human reason and science could take care of. And I think it almost, the film here risks setting up this kind of dichotomy where you can be a, a science person and view the world in a wholly rational frame, or you can be a superstitious religious person. And and, and I think it's, it's kind of missing the point. So I guess if I was going to try to defend cool guy pastor, yes. Dave's brother, uh, there is a lot of conflation in the, the public in general mm -hmm. that uh, does still rely on the church for a fact-finding mm -hmm. mission. And often when the facts according to the church uh, conflict with the facts according to science, mm -hmm. say, uh, they will go with the facts according to the church. Perhaps uh, religion and science are not uh, overlapped entirely, but there is still some overlap there. If we're going to say the function of religion, and, and people might debate this has something to do with like personal edification, um, one's own spirituality, participation in a community larger than oneself. We don't see a lot of that. We see religion as a mechanism for like truth and and that overlaps like with the legal system. So that's why we keep having court cases in these movies and things like that, because religion isn't presented as a sort of more like existential way of life. Um, it's, it's represented as like a objective system of belief. It is weird that these movies use, I think in almost every single one, they use the legal system mm -hmm. as the arbiter for these deeper existential questions that the legal system is not set up to answer these questions. We're going to prove once and for all that God is dead. You see a lot of tension created by the First Amendment, <laughs> both the uh, free expression clause, but also the establishment clause and the free exercise clause. You know, there there are tensions there, but there's never going to be a resolution on a metaphysical level. Yeah, I don't think we think of like the legal system as an arbiter of like spiritual meaning. Um, and I think that's where these films get kind of wonky. Somebody threw a brick through my window. Okay, just take it easy. No, you did this. Oh, he shoves him first. Oh. 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 I think he slapped him there. Yeah. I like how he had the force to pull them both apart. Let me ask you this. Do you think that your religious beliefs get in the way of real social change? No, my, my beliefs are the foundation of change. I mean, Jesus was the ultimate social justice warrior. That line. That line. Such a great line. A moment where a woman's testimony wasn't even permissible in a court of law. Well, I've been doing this a long time, and I wish I'd seen those words put into action more often. Yeah, me too. We're all responsible for our part, but it's grace and then justice, not the other way around. Amen. Let's say grace. Dear Lord. <laughs> he just wants to eat his pizza. Well, first of all, for, for anyone who doesn't remember this, that's Josh from the first film. I like what Josh admits here, but it's confusing, right? Because he calls Jesus the original social justice warrior. I have to wonder who that line in this movie is geared for, because mm -hmm. the people I think that enjoy these movies probably chafe at the term social justice mm -hmm. warrior. But it's, it's interesting that the stuff that Josh points out um, about his particular faith, like this emphasis on 
speaking up for the voiceless and women and children. I mean, there's a whole tradition of like liberation theology where a bunch of like priests from Latin America went to grad school in Europe, read a bunch of like Marx and went back to Latin America being like, oh, for us, our faith means that we need to like overthrow unjust governments. But even like the use you see of Christianity by a lot of contemporary philosophers, especially Europeans, the stuff they really get into is both the model of like subjectivity. So again, the way in which believing in a thing can affect my individual life and how I exist. There's a French philosopher, Alain Badiou, that wrote a whole book on St. Paul. In the book, he says like, I'm the king of the atheist. I would never believe in God. I'm too French and cool. However, there's a really interesting model here of someone believing in ideas that lead to social change. And then Cool Guy Brother says while eating pizza, you know, I wish I would have seen some more of that. So it's interesting to have this like internal critique within the film because the films again are representing this world where it seems like Christianity is about like laws, institutions, um, codifying beliefs in this sort of objective way. And you have cool guy Josh saying, no, it's about like living a life of grace and justice and all this sort of stuff. But it wins me back over to cool brother a little bit too. Cause he seems to be saying, if what you said was true, like if we saw that, I would be cool with faith. I would still want to be religious, but that's not what I'm seeing. Every time I turn on the news in Hope Springs, wherever he lives, it seems like religion's all about like court cases. Well, it's not not about court cases. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's like the first really Christian-y thing Pastor Dave does when he like <laughs> forgives this guy. After he went on his crusade. Yeah. The other night I stood before this burn all- Build that wall? Whoa. So I am withdrawing my lawsuit against the school and dropping the charges against Adam Richards. He's dropping the charges? No, you don't get to do that. Yeah, it seems like the logic he's using there is like, if someone comes into my house and kills my friend, I can be like, no, no, it's my house. Yeah. So I'd like to drop the charges. Yeah, no, it's just don't prosecute him. I, I, yeah. I have forgiven him. He can go free. You know, we said earlier that God called him to fight and we see him get into literal fights, but now it's him like turning the proverbial other cheek, I guess. Forgiving the kid, um, giving the church up, I think, I think if I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt, they're trying to do something like that, but it's not It's not really hidden. He just used the legal services of his cool guy brother for months mm -hmm. with no compensation whatsoever. He's dropped his entire legal yeah. practice to prosecute this thing. That's the real victim, his cool guy brother. <laughs> he could have been doing social justice law with crackheads in Chicago, putting ketchup on hot dogs left and right, and instead, He's wasted all that time. Which was completely futile and is now being dropped. Yeah. Devin, thank you so much for sitting through this film with me. Yeah, it was a it was a pleasure to be here, to go through this movie. <laughs> so, you know, I'll be in touch about the fourth movie, the fifth one when it comes out. I plan to keep um, sending these movies your way as a sort of curse. Yeah, well, wherever there is a theological debate waged in a courtroom, I will be there. Make sure you subscribe to Devin's channel, Legal Eagle. We'll have a link in the description. We're talking about the movie Eagle even more over there. Can you believe all of the God's Not Dead content we're giving them? God is truly dead. Thank you so much again to Devin from Legal Eagle for joining me today. Let us know what you thought, if there's things you noticed from the movie that we didn't notice. As always, thank you so, so much to our patrons and be sure to check out our Patreon page if you haven't in a while. Hit that subscribe button like you're a judge who brought her gavel to mass and don't forget to ring that bell. And as always, thanks for watching, later.